Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a uh, bit of disassembly to do for you of this little guy right here. This is the uh, Chris Reeve Knives Sebenza number 31. Um, very interesting piece, um, although in some ways actually not all that interesting. In some ways it's just another damn Sebenza. And that's actually a fine thing to be, right? I mean, another Sebenza, <laughs> pretty good. But at the same time, uh, at some level, it, it's barely worth a re-review. Um, they, they, they've made some changes, but those changes aren't that big. But anyways, one thing it is certainly worth is a disassembly. And if you're curious about the tools I'm using to do this disassembly, go ahead and check out nickshabazz.com slash tools. You'll see a full list of everything. But um, I'm going to take this guy apart um, for two reasons. Partly because that's the way I always do things. Partly because the um, the, 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 the lovely viewer who has uh, sent this guy along, actually one of the moderators in my Patreon Discord server, um, and just a gem of a human being, has asked me to remove the damn lanyard because, well, yeah, of course. Um, and partly because I think it's important that you all see how this knife works because it is fundamentally different than the prior Sebenzas in the world. So I want to go on ahead and take this guy apart. And I'll go ahead and clean things up before I show you guys what's uh, what's going on here. I'm using uh, some of my precious stash of isopropyl alcohol. We are in the middle of the corona crisis here in the uh, U.S. of the A. And so isopropyl is getting to be a little bit harder to come by. But it's important to me that I'm doing things consistently in degrees and in whatnot. If I'm going to pass judgment, I need to do that. So it's life. Um, but anyways, just cleaning this guy up here. The uh, Sebenza 31, the main difference that's, uh, you know, they got a couple little quality of life things, you know, changing the position of the clip and whatnot. But for the most part, the big difference with the Sebenza 31 is the the, 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 the detent ball here. Um, you can see here that the detent ball is now a big old ceramic ball and that that is also the lock bar interface. So that is the thing that sits up against the blade here. And if we look on the back of the blade, we see there is a little area where this ball slides up on there. We can see the point of contact there. Um, so that is the lock, lock bar interface. It's not any more than just the... the, the um, uh, it's not anymore just the titanium, it's that whole piece. Um, this is nice in some ways in that it, uh, not only is it, you know, solid and whatnot, um, but it also means that there cannot be lock stick, um, because to the best of my knowledge, a ceramic ball will not stick to titanium. It's not how lock stick works, not how any of this works. But nonetheless, um, that, that, that's, uh, that's a factor. And so that's one of the main differences we see here. Go ahead and clean off these washers. Again, just using some rubbing alcohol on a little patch here. Um, cleaning things off. This is the first video, like normal video, I have filmed for the channel in probably three weeks. Just finished moving, uh, which was not a... Well, it's over. That's the very best thing you can say about a move, right? Is it's done. Um, but it's done. And I'm, I'm in my new studio, so to speak, uh, which is the corner of my office. Uh, Southern California means I'm not going to have a big old studio room or anything like that. Um, but nonetheless, it's a, a little desk in the corner of my office. And, uh, you know, it's nice to be here. It's nice to be back. Uh, this is also, as I mentioned, the time of the Rona. And so I am, you know, frankly happy for the normalcy of just taking a part of Sebenza, right? If my biggest problem today is people on the Chris Reeve forums and Blade forums yelling at me because I'm doing it wrong, then by God, I'm I'm, I'm doing okay, right? <laughs> Things are going to be all right. So, um, yeah, that's the, um, so this whole thing is the, uh, the 31. I am still trying to decide exactly how I'm going to handle the 31 here as a reviewer, because at some level, it's the same damn knife. I mean, I, I know that they've given it a, a version number increment, and, you know, that's fine. Cool, rock on there, Chris. Uh, well, more likely Tim and Dan, uh, the, 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 the folks who are running Chris Reeve Knives now, um, Chris Reeve's, um, son, Tim. And his uh, ex, uh, Ann, are running the place. But anyways, um, you know, I don't, uh, it, at some level, it's it's barely worth the sort of extended comment. Um, but what I'm going to go ahead and do is start putting this guy back together. And as I do so, I am going to use the actual Chris Reed Grace. Um, the reason I say that is because, and I, in order to get it, I need to go fetch it out of the box here that um, my buddy sent this knife in. Um, while I'm at it, I'll throw the lanyard in there so that way it doesn't disappear. One of the things I do like about Chris Reeve knives is that they send you in a little packet here everything you need to take it apart, namely one wrench and a thing of fluoro grease. I could have used that wrench, but I'm, eh, I don't know. 
for this, but I want to use the floral grease that he's got here. Um, do I love this grease? Not necessarily, but you know what? It works. Um, it's good enough, and it is sort of, it may be one of the better options for Chris Reed. There's always a little bit of like, ugh, coming out of it at first, so um, keep that in mind. Now, that said, already I can hear the Chris Reeve fanboys yelling at me. Um, some of the, the, the greatest hate I've gotten on the channel, actually, uh, has been uh, from the Chris Reeve people. Not the, the, not the knife makers. I mean, you know, damn it, Anna Gray. I got no, no issue there, at least in my pretty limited interactions with them. Um, but no, from the people on the Blade forums who are entirely convinced that I don't know what I'm doing when disassembling a Sabenza. And their argument, and frankly, they, they've got a point here. Where there is the, uh, there is a second backspacer here that needs to go there. Where did you go? Come here, backspacer. Oh, here it is. Eh, hiding. Um, that needs to be there in order for the knife to, you know, function. Um, but anyways, their argument was, because in my first disassembly, what I did is I put this guy back together, and this was like a couple of generations ago, but I put the Sebenza back together in such a way that I, uh, I, I built it up like I do most of my normal knives, where I kind of put everything together as a blade sandwich, um, and, you know, crank it all down, and their argument was that you can't actually crimp the washers if you do it that way, and so what you should do instead is you should, um, well, do what I'm about to show you. You basically put the handle back together first, and then, only then, do you actually um, take everything and reinstall the, uh, the the blade and whatnot. Um, and so, you know, I can see the logic in that, right? Um, but they were not a big fan of mine uh, for a, a good while. And to be fair, I don't need everyone to be a fan of me, right? Um, that's, uh, that's a sad way to go through life. If everybody has to love you, uh, you're probably not going to love yourself. But nonetheless, um, you know, they, they, I, I'm willing to accept the, you know, criticism when they get a point, right? And so the way I'm going to handle this is to um, basically take the knife. I'm going to put it back together. I'm going to put a little bit of this fluoro grease right up on here. This uh, pivot bushing is one of the more important elements of the knife, actually. It's one of the things that makes the Sebenza 21 a Sebenza. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, it makes the Sebenza line. For a while there, the... Um, there was the Sebenza 25, I believe, uh, which is now referred to as the, Inco the that's the large Incosi now. Nonetheless, um, that didn't have it, but it makes the, uh, it's one of the things that makes the Sebenza line the Sebenza, is this pivot bushing here in the middle there. I'm going to push that into place. Come on there. Perfect. And that actually maintains perfect spacing, or at least nominally, uh, perfect spacing uh, with the, um, um, uh, the washes and whatnot, and make sure that the knife, uh, the, the basically, uh, great, just trying to put a little bit of grease right up here on the detent ball path, um, that way that can slide freely. So I'll slide this back into position here, that's the problem with grease and things, is they have a tendency to come out again. Come on. Uh, there we go. Got that in there. Okay, beautiful. Now, uh, put a little bit of uh, floral grease on the washes here. Try not to use too, too much, but I'm going to use too, too much because that's who I am, right? That looks about... All right, now a little bit more. A little bit more. Then on the other side here, I'm going to try and attack... I'm going to put this washer in here. And note that these washers are asymmetrical. And one of them needs to be substantially smaller because of the uh, use of the, well, because that's where the uh, detent ball, uh, that's where the detent ball goes. And so I just need to get this in there and get this working. And I will go ahead and I'll drop this back into place yet again. Now, the thing is, once I have everything stacked up here, once I have everything popped in together, come on, people, pop in there. Make this happen, please. Um, by the way, this... Uh, I'm trying real hard. You know, it's never a good idea to force it, so to speak. So, there we go. Pop that loose one more time. And then slip that bushing in there. Hopefully, I'll come at it from a better angle this time. And it will slip slide right on in there. Beautiful. Okay, that's in there. Good, now I drop this in here. Now my hands are covered in fluoro grease, but that's, you know, what else is new? I think I'm going to put a little bit more grease in there because I did lose some. 
Yeah, there we go. Now what I'm going to do is just slip this whole packet, basically, in between the scales. What this means is there is no way for me to crimp those scales, uh, I'm sorry, to crimp those washes. Uh, assuming I've got everything in alignment right, the bushing itself, the washes should go to, uh, basically the bushing position should hold the washes in place and everything should be able to slip in as it is right now. And indeed, that sure appears to be being the case. Come on. Slipping that on in, just like so. Beautiful. Actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to loosen this just the slightest. Whoa there. <laughs> okay, I'm going to loosen that maybe a little bit less than that, but nonetheless, um, that gives me a little bit more play in there, such that everything can slide around. Now what I need to do is I'm just using the light here, and you can't see that, but I'm using the light there to see that all the washes are in proper positioning. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip this pivot in here in the middle. You don't actually have to grease the pivot because the washes are uh, all around it there. Uh, I'm sorry, that bushing is around it, so there's no need. Okay, good. I've popped the pivot on through there. Good. All right, so now, moment of truth. Well, not the moment of truth. One of many moments of truth, right? We have many moments, each of which could be true or false. You never hear about the moment of falsehood, do you? Anyways, moving along. Um, just slipping this guy in here. Beautiful. All righty. And really? How is this over tight? Maybe I've over tightened this back part so it's a little too tight. Because with the pivot, that shouldn't really be much of a factor. There it is. Okay. Yeah, that's nice and smooth. No play in either direction. No lock rock, no none of that. Yeah, that's good. That'll wear in over time. Um, they, This is relatively brand new. I don't know that that's a thing you can say, but I just said it. Um, And I think we're actually good to go here. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, that'll smooth out over time, but for the moment, um, well, not smooth out, but kind of free up a little bit over time, but for the moment, I think we're done here. Um, I'm going to go on ahead and figure out exactly what I am going to do with this knife. Um, I mean, aside from, well, cut things with it, um, but uh, how I'm going to go ahead and review it, but at the very least, you've now seen the inside of it. You've seen that new ceramic detent ball, which also serves as the lock bar interface. You've seen the washes. You've seen the, the very few little changes there, but at the end of the day, that's what we got. So uh, there you go. I hope this has been interesting to you, and have yourselves just an absolute wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.